Coming up on Good Day Chicago in our 6 o'clock hour, fighting continues between Israel and Hamas while the United States has now strengthened its response in that region. And after the break, we're talking with the CEO of the Jewish National Fund on the ground in Israel this morning as fighting continues. Rocket attacks continue in Israel and Gaza following the surprise attack by the militant group Hamas yeah. over the weekend. And joining us is the Jewish National Fund USA CEO. We've got Russell Robinson joining us this morning. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show here to talk about this. We understand that you were in flight. You were, you were going to Israel. When you landed, all of this started to unfold. Is that correct? And, and if that is, tell us what you experienced. So that is correct. Thank you for having me on. Uh, it, uh, when uh, coming here, I was coming for another, but uh, on flight was when the uh, uh, vicious terrorist attack was uh, uh, um, uh, promulgated against the people of Israel. And uh, that's something I want to talk about as well, is that this was not a military action. This was simply a vicious attack of now over 700 people that are dead, children, uh, grandmothers, mothers, and fathers, murdered uh, and uh, uh, being able to get here and being able to now set up a situation room, which we have with Jewish National Fund here, uh, right outside of Tel Aviv at our high school in Israel, uh, we are responding and standing with the people of Israel. All right, tell us what you're doing right now to help the victims of this. And, uh, and also, what are you hearing about what's being done to try to get the hostages back? So we have set up the minute that happened, we set up a call. This is a group of people that live on what we call the uh, Gaza envelope. This is the communities that face the Gaza Strip. It is not new to us. These are people who are our friends, the Jewish National Fund. These are people who we know. We have been part of uh, build the communities. These are farmers. These are people that are children that we personally have that relationship with. So we put together a situation room to find out their needs. Right away, we're doing evacuation. In that entire area, the Army is evacuating all of the residents. So you can imagine, that is about 32,000 people that are being evacuated to the center of Israel. We have over 2,000 homes and, and hostels and places that people have offered and now open up their homes for families that they didn't know the day before uh, that are coming there, their family facing the trauma of constant threats of trauma, that they lost family members, so many people. There's not a person in the Gaza envelope that has not been hurt uh, in, in, in a circle of family deaths by this whole situation. And we're providing things today. I have 160 teenagers here from America, and they're packing 1,300 bags of shampoo and, and towels and soap and toothpaste and candy to give to the over 1,000 people who've been injured already in this a uh, terrible, terrible crisis. Well, your timing, obviously, with these supplies is as well, uh, you know, it, not that you intended that, but this is really critical right now. You know, I want to ask you what people are saying about the Iron Dome. You know, there were there was concerns that, you know, the, the, something was not right. Um, the fact that uh, this was so, caught, Israel was caught off guard. Um, are there are a lot of questions right now about how that could happen. Well, the Israelis and the army and the government are now going to deal with the present issues, which is dealing with uh, cleaning up the terrorist attack and the terrorists that are still promulgating the southern part of Israel. Uh, the government and the and the people of Israel are going to be dealing with the response that has that is a response that is not once there's no other side of the story. This was a group of people, thousands, hundreds of people that came over and murdered citizens. Kidnapped. I want your people to know they kidnapped five year olds, four year olds, and grandmothers and fathers and mothers. This was not a military. There are over a hundred and plus hostages that are there. And who are they? They're teenagers, they're children. There's pictures of children that they put in cages, children that they, five year olds. This is not, a, there's no other side of the story. This is a story about. A people who believe in life and a people who believe in hatred and death. What is the biggest need right now? The biggest need is that we have to stand tall first with the people. So this is this is the the democracy sitting here in this 
area of, of facing this viciousness that goes on. It is a story, an American story, as well as an Israeli story. We are now supplying the therapy sessions. We're supplying the relocation, the, the packages, the hot meals, the pieces. And we're working with the people of Israel. It's unbelievable what's going on here on a volunteer basis. And you have to understand, if you're volunteering and doing this, somebody in your family was already called up in the army. They already called up over 300,000 people into the army reservists that are there. And people can go on jnf.org forward slash support Israel and, uh, uh, and contribute. And we need to stand tall so that the day after when they home that we're offering the therapy sessions and we're offering the, the the packages and that we're offering the food. These are people who are going to return home and a child is going to look across the street and realize that their friend is no longer there. This is children who are going to hear a door knocking and it's not going to be because somebody wanted to know who they were. This is a terrorist who was knocking on the door to murder them just weeks ago. Yes. And we have to stay involved with the people of Israel and tell the real story there's not another side. It is a story of life. Yeah, I have seen some of the images on social media, and they are just frightening, incredible, and just horrific. I want to ask you, uh, we have seen protests um, in both um, New York City, Chicago. I, I saw some in Fort Lauderdale, and it, it, it seems like the tensions, uh, you, you have one group showing up, then the other side, and they start arguing. And it seems like the tension is building even here in America. What is your concern right now? Well, my concern is always that when, when anything happens, there's always the group of people that first off are the enemies of life, and, and they just have to be put in that. There's good and there's evil. And you talk evil. Second, there's the other of people that said, well, what's the other part of the story? And there's no other part of the story. When people are murdered, when you come and murder children and grandparents and fathers and mothers, there's no other side of the story. And so all of us have to stand tall with the government of the United States, with all of our people to stand tall and talking about good over evil. Because this is not an Israel issue. This is a world issue. And what you're seeing here is played out here on this little piece of property here. But it's a, it's about the world and what good over evil must be. And for as a Jewish community, we're standing tall. Across the United States already, hundreds of thousands of people uh, have come on. We've had Zoom calls that we had 2,000, 3,000 people wanting to know the story and what to happen. As I said, I have 160 American teenagers here. This is the Jewish community standing tall with the of Israel because of our historic, our ancestral connection to this land and to the people. And for everybody, it is about connection to the good. Russell Robinson, thank you so much. Russell is with the Jewish National Fund USA. We appreciate your time this morning. Be safe. Thank you. Wow, well, how that is incredible. And he's absolutely right when you talk about the uh, images that are coming out here. And um, I've seen the images of the children he talked about. Who were at that cages. music festival, well, you know, well, that too, some the of them. Children yeah. in cages. And there's somebody fil filming them, and they're laughing. And these children are actually in dog cages. It's, it's very disturbing. Um, and I can understand how upset the, upsetting this can be for, for him, you know, arriving and all right. of the change of events, you know.